Hey everyone, Christina here. Over the weekend, I asked you guys on Facebook sort of like what you would want to see in future videos or why you watch my channel in general. And one of the topics that came up quite a bit was watercoloring. So today I'm going to be showing you three easy watercolor techniques that you can add into your card making. You may have seen some of these in my videos in the past, but I hope it's a really good reminder of some fun, simple things you can do to make your cards more interesting. So here we go. The first technique I'm going to be showing you guys um, could sometimes be called an ombre technique. That might be what you're more familiar with when you see this particular style. So I'm going to walk you through two different ways to do it. The first is going from one color faded out to white or to a very pale shade of that color. And then I'm going to show you an example using multiple colors and we're going to make sort of like a rainbow background. So I've started out by taping down my watercolor paper to a hard surface. To do these washes, it really is helpful to have them taped down so that you can pick the board up and move it around and kind of help the water go in the direction where you need it to go. So I'm starting out with a pretty strong bright pink color and I've put that straight onto dry paper and then I dipped my brush in clean, clear water and then without like, you know, drag it off or anything, I just brought it straight back to my watercolor paper and then continued painting all the way down to the bottom of my watercolor paper. What this does is it, uh, first it dilutes the paint that's on your brush, so it's a very pale pink in this case, but then also it adds water to the paper and so um, as I hold this board up, gravity is going to help pull that darker shade. It's going to pull that down through all that wet paper down to the very bottom. So you'll see uh, some water kind of pooling down at the very bottom right before that tape. That's um, evidence of the water traveling over that paper and wanting to go all the way to the very bottom. So after you have it to that point, you want to put it aside and just let it dry because um, you don't want to keep messing with it too much, especially for really simple backgrounds like this, like that. For this next example, I'm going to be using multiple colors and this technique I found to be a little bit more difficult, but very doable. And I only uh, call it difficult because it can be very easy to get muddy colors if you're not careful. So I like to have a paper towel in my less dominant hand, the hand that doesn't have the paintbrush, and I can kind of sop up any pools of color that are threatening to kind of go into colors where I don't want it to be. So this orange is kind of overpowering that pink, so I'm going to come back in with the pink and go right over the top. And the reason I'm able to do this is because all of that paint is still wet. You don't want to be putting any wet paint into dry paper because then you're just going to get a harsh line. But if it's wet onto wet, then you're going to get some nice faded color. So I'm adding some yellow and then I'm going to go straight into blue because I know that um, there's a big bead of yellow paint on the piece here. You can see it right at the bottom. So I know that that yellow is going to mix with the blue and I'm going to get a nice green color in between. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth with my paintbrush and kind of mix these colors and try to get the colors to blend a little bit more. This is this part can be a little bit dangerous because that's when you start to get like mud. So I'll show you an example here because I start to mix a little too much and everything goes a little muddy here in a minute. Um, all the colors are kind of overtaking each other. I'll show you what I did with that. So I'm tipping up that board and I'm pulling a turning it upside down so that that color that was, you know, the pink and orange, so it would stop going into the yellow. I'm trying to preserve that yellow area because I realized that those other colors around it were just super strong. So don't be afraid to pick up your board, kind of move it around, and also kind of go over those areas again. So here are where I'm mixing and I'm starting to get a little bit of mud there in the center. I'm losing all that yellow. So I let it sit there for a minute and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Then I decided to just come in with the paper towel and just dab up that entire yellow area. Just pick up that color and then I'll go back over it with yellow and hopefully that will help me out. 
So you can always do that. You know, if you're having an area that's looking pretty muddy or icky, go ahead and sop up some of that color and go over it again with the color you want it to be. So I'm going over it with yellow and it's not going to completely get rid of any of that mixing of color, but it's definitely going to bring the yellow back. So I'm just mixing that in there using those stripes going back and forth, just trying to get some more color going. So I've tipped it up on its side so it would stop mixing, you know, top to bottom. So I didn't want those colors to mix anymore. And then I'm also going to bring in my heat tool. Having a heat tool or um, you could even use a hair dryer if you're using this. I just don't recommend using a hair dryer when you're embossing. But since we're just drying the watercolor here, you could definitely use um, a hair dryer. Basically, when you use the hair dryer or the heat tool, it stops those colors from mixing. So it, it leaves it exactly the way it is right now. And I found that to be the easiest way to preserve the look. So I've stamped some images from an Avery L stamp set. This is, I believe it's called the Pegasus Duo stamp set. And I've stamped that onto some watercolor paper. It's the same watercolor paper that I use for the background, which is Arches Cold Press. And I stamped that in VersaFine Onyx Black ink, which is a permanent, uh, or not permanent, but waterproof ink. And I'm just painting in the tail on this um, unicorn. And the thing with, well, I guess it's a Pegasus. It's not really a unicorn. So I, I don't think unicorns technically have wings. So that's why it's called Pegasus. Anyway, um, I painted the mane on my little critter here the same way that I'm painting the tail here. So I thought I would just show you this portion because I did kind of struggle on that mane for a little bit until I finally got it to where I wanted it, wanted it to be. And I realized that the technique I'm, that I'm using on the tail is exactly what I did. So just to simplify, you just bring color, kind of move it along, and then before it can dry too much, kind of dab it off so it's a lighter shade. So I'm gonna bring in some pink on uh, his cheeks and just to give a little bit of a blush. And I'm also going to paint the nose area and the hooves purple. So this is gonna be a really cute little critter. And I'll eventually use some dyes to cut these out so that I can add it to my piece here. So I did wanna mention that that um, faded pink to white background, I'm actually going to be using that on a different card later this week. So you're not gonna see an example with that particular background, but for this unicorn card or the Pegasus card, I'm going to be using that really rainbow colorful background, This the second background that I painted. Uh, so I'm using the exact same colors that I use on that background on the painting of the critter and the, you know, the stars and whatever, whatnot. I ended up not using that cloud, but um, there is a cloud on the stamp set if you want to use it. So I used a kind of a diluted black or a pale gray shade just to add some shading. I wanted the body to remain white, so I thought that was a really nice stark contrast with the multicolor mane and tail. So I'm just adding some gray shading in here so it'll look like uh, he's still white on his body, but the, they're shading on the different areas as well. So I'll just bring some shading underneath that mane. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the horn and also the stars. And those are all going to be the same color. This is where I deviated from the background colors. I actually used a yellow ochre for this because I thought it looked more golden. So like I said before, there are some coordinating dies for the stamp set. So I used those and placed them directly over top of my critter and the stars. Use a little bit of post-it tape to hold those in place and then ran them through my Big Shot machine to cut them out. I also took a circle from the nested circle set from Simon Says Stamp and cut a circle out of my background piece and I can save that other circle for another card if I want to. So I'm going to create a card base and this is some Nina Solar White cardstock in the 110 pound version and I've scored that at five and a half to create a side folding card. I'm going to place my watercolor panel over the top and use a pencil just to pencil in where that die cut circle window is. So after I have that, I can take my um, stamp and I'm going to form that stamp into a circular shape. So I have this clear transparency sheet. It's actually the grid sheet that I usually use in my MISTI. So um, I'll have that link down the supply section below. But you could also use any of the plastic from like a stamp set or any type of packaging. You just want something um, that's going to 
a stamp is going to stick to so that you can form it into that curve shape that matches the circle and then pick it up with a stamp press or an acrylic block. This is going to make it so I can stamp that curved shape perfectly. So I'm using some more onyx black ink. I'm just going to stamp that down onto that circle and then I'll use my eraser to erase any of that pencil that I drew around the circle shape. I'm going to add some foam adhesive on the back of that watercolor piece and then I'm going to go ahead and press that down onto the card front. I'm going to arrange my cute little rainbow pegasus and the stars on the inside of that circle area and then I'll use some foam adhesive to adhere the Pegasus and I'll use some Ranger Multimedia Matte, which is a really strong liquid glue. I'll use that to adhere the stars. I'm just picking those stars up with a quick sticks tool. Just picks up those stars a little easier or a quick stick tool. And then I'll add some white dash lines around the outer edge with the Uniball Signo Broad White Pen. So that's for the card today. I will be showing the other two cards later this week. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this gives you some guidance on some different watercolor techniques. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.